All right, everyone, BlizzCon 2023 is over for me, at least on the convention side. Really was looking forward to the campfire chat today, was able to sit row two to watch it live, and it was a really cool experience. I was happy about a lot of the stuff I heard, and then I wasn't disappointed in anything I heard. I was just hoping to hear more. Very specifically, I wanted to know the name and a little bit of details about the new class that was coming out but they just has confirmed that it's coming and more details in the future. So that was a little disappointing, but overall BlizzCon as a whole met a lot of great people, got a lot of great experiences, and it was a fun time, which I'm sure nobody is surprised by that. So for this video, I wanted to quickly go over the campfire details for Diablo 4. Blizzard put out a great communication, and I thought we can go through it for a little bit, and then I can tell you my thoughts, especially on being there live on the show floor. Delve into the developer campfire chat at BlizzCon 2023. So they put this out about an hour ago. Now, they went into details on Diablo 4's first expansion, the Vessel of Hatred. And basically, we're going to be back in the jungle, and we're going to be fighting Mephisto. Really, other than that, all they talked about was the art and the scenery, and how everything is going to blend together very well as far as the architecture and the environment. But any actual details on this new expansion, I mean, there's there's nothing. Basically, only the area was talked about. So nothing of real interest there. And the fact that we are basically a year away, like we, we can we can just kind of put that one to bed for now. What's interesting, and this is what I talked about on yesterday's video, is season two. So we're used to mid-season events. This is something that PoE has done for a while. And what I feel Blizzard is doing is they are trying to maintain the players that are still playing and bring back the ones, the D4 bad crowd. So the people that played preseason season ones that are ones that are like, I'm done with Diablo. They are investing a lot in public outrage or criticism and trying to fix a lot of things hoping to bring back those overwhelmingly large numbers at the beginning. So what are they doing? So we are getting new malignant rings and we are getting a brand new pinnacle fight within this season. And they went into details on those starting with the new malignant rings. And these rings are very powerful. So Varshan is going to be the boss that drops these. And Varshan, I think I've, I don't know, I've fought in a hundred times. So I'm hoping that it's going to be easy to acquire these rings. And they have a lot of powerful attributes. Now me, as somebody that loves Barbarian, we'll just talk Barbarian for a second. Specifically, Overpower, Ring of Red Fuhrer. After spending 100 Fury within three seconds, your next cast of Hammer of the Ancients, Upheaval, and Death Blow is a guaranteed critical strike and deals up to 30% multiplicable critical strike damage. Yeah, I really, really want that. Seriously, so awesome. So, I think the idea behind this, and just follow me for a second, is... These are only going to be in the game for the final month of the season. So whether they're crazy overpowered, whether they're fun and you're just a devastator, who cares because they, because they could just take them out for season three. But basically the idea, I think, is you're going to need this power from this ring for this new boss fight. And do they have a picture? Oh, yeah. So this new boss. Oh, it's down here. Let me show you. Mm, we're going to jump past that right here. So this new Zir boss fight is going to be 25 different levels. And every single time you defeat it, it gets way harder. And they are saying that once you finish the season journey, you will unlock this. And basically, you're level 100. You have finished the season's journey. You are an S-tier build with min-maxed gear. You can go through this true pinnacle content to unlock a blood glyph that gives you crazy damage multipliers up to 200%. So we have been screaming for Pinnacle end end game content, and they are delivering it inside of Season 2. So what you want to do in preparation for this, this, at least that's what I am doing, is I am rebuilding my overpowered Hoda Barb, and on Tuesday I am going to farm this new ring, 
And then once that happens, I'm going to sit back and wait for this challenge to be available to see if my build has what it takes. So we will have to just wait and see. On top of that, they showcased the Midwinter Blight. And this is basically a December holiday event. And you're going to be able to go into Frozen Peaks and you're going to be able to fight a lot of these enemies. And in doing so, you're going to get a special currency where you can get some cosmetic rewards. So inside of Season 2, and again, I said this yesterday, they gave us a training dummy. They are updating the enchanting system to make it feel a little bit more like a crafting experience. We're getting this winter season event. We're getting pinnacle content and we are getting malignant rings. You, you could hate Blizzard all you want. You could say, oh, that I'm still not coming back. But I mean, at least an A for effort for trying to bring people back to season two. I mean, I am going to for sure hunt my Barbarian Ring, and I'm for sure going to see if my build what has what it takes to get through all 25 tiers. So at least that is my goal. Also, what they showed today, or at least was announced today, is the patch notes for what's coming November 7th. So again, this coming Tuesday is when we are going to have these new rings in the game. So you're going to have the Malignant Rings actually drop, you can go get them, and I don't know. I can't tell specifically, but I'm pretty sure Druid got the worst ring. I'm not sure because it does have a willpower percent on it, and normally you can only get percent to core affix on an amulet. So now with this ring for Druid, you can get percent to willpower and percent to willpower on your amulet. That's pretty crazy, but the pull-in effect and then damage explosion, I don't know if it's going to be as good, but... The rings look awesome. They're doing a ton of bug fixing in the dungeon and the season of blood. They're updating some quests. They're updating some gameplay, trying to get the training dummy and all the stuff working correctly. Accessi accessibility and miscellaneous. So they're doing a lot with the season of blood. So other than that, you've got the malignant rings. You've got the season. And then they gave us a new roadmap. So they showed everything that we got for season two. They showed off the malignant rings. They showed us the enchanting window. They showed us the new Zeer fights, the midwinter blight. And then, of course, for the new season, we are getting a gauntlet leaderboard system. And that's what this is right here. And the gauntlet leaderboard is going to have a great search or filter function where you could put in your class. You could put in hardcore. You could put in group. And you can see how you're doing against everybody in the world. And this is going to be a static gauntlet, static dungeon, where you're going to have to collect things as you go through it. And you're going to get a score based upon how you complete it or how far you get or how fast you kill. They didn't go into great details on that. But ultimately, you are going to have a score that you can continuously try to improve on. And every week they are going to top, take the top players and put it into their permanent Hall of Fame where people could see your build and everything that you're doing. So kind of gearing up for more competitive play, which I think is kind of neat as well. And you can actually access that gauntlet and start competing once you're in World Tier 4. And they said you don't have to wait till level 100, but then on the screen they showed that everybody was 100. So. I'm guessing if you want the best possible score, of course, you want to be the highest possible levels because you have the strongest possible character. So that makes sense to me. But all in all, for Diablo over the last two days, am I happy? I am going to say yes. Okay. Because of the season two events they are adding. Am I happy that the expansion was announced for end of 2024 and practically no details other than Mephisto and the environment were announced? No, I'm not really happy about that. You know, for sure the class has already been made and the art is all up for it. And I don't know, I just feel like they could have teased the future more. Like, hey, we're going to give you all of these events and we hope you enjoy them. But just know that a year from now, 
you're going to have the, I don't know. I just, I just wish, I wish they dangled the carrot actually more than they did. Uh, the overall D4 feeling was they are working hard fixing on itemization. They touched on itemization and I almost forgot it was confirmed by Joe today on stage that the aspects will be moving to the Codex of Power. So instead of the way of storing your aspects right now inside of your stash, which is a horrible system, they want to move that into the Codex. And they said they are working hard on that now. Don't expect it in season three, but maybe that's a season four thing. So I thought that was good too. They continue to work on itemization. They get the Codex of Power working so you don't have to store that. They improve enchanting. And then over and over again, they talked about what's the season three um, theme, end game. What's the season three theme, end game. And then one time he's like, end game, end game, end game. Said it three times, which is what the game needs. Uh, when I was able to meet with them at the mixer, I told them the game feels pretty good up to level 75. And then after that, it just kind of falls off because you're just so strong that you're you could solo the world boss and you can get through all content. So true pinnacle end game and activities to do is what's going to make the game shine. So I think they're focused on the right things. But overall, BlizzCon 2023, other than whatever happens in tonight's festivities, are in the books. I'm always available if you need anything through Discord, and I fly home tomorrow. You're all awesome. Anybody that I got to spend time with this weekend, too, it was, it was just honestly a blast. So I'll see you all later. Bye.